Welcome to Scrolling, the podcast about the Elder Scrolls Online. I'm Ket. This is episode number nine. PTS version 5.3.0 for the upcoming Harrowstorm DLC uh, is now active. So if you want to, you can uh, get in there and start testing out some of these combat changes or just get a preview of the DLC content that's coming up. Uh, as usual, for a first quarter DLC, this will be a two dungeon pack. Uh, the two new dungeons are called Ice Reach and Unhallowed Grave. Uh, and they say that their biggest goal for this update is to further improve game performance, and some of the combat changes we'll see uh, are going to support that goal. Um, not that there's anything too earth shattering in these patch notes, but there are a few fairly impactful changes that we'll talk about uh, a little bit. However, we're not going to dive too deep into those things uh, on this episode because uh, this being PTS, uh, a lot of these things are subject to change. So stuff that we might kind of get worked up about or something right now may not even make it to the live patch or may not be as bad by the time it gets there. Um, so I think the thing that we're going to focus on primarily on this episode are these new armor sets that we're going to be getting because um, there's a good chance those are more or less going to go live as they are, maybe some minor adjustments here and there. Uh, and then uh, we'll just kind of quickly gloss over some of the big combat and balance changes, uh, but not really discuss them too deeply. And we'll wait till the patch goes live. We'll have another episode then, and then we'll really dig into those things. Um, I think that's that's how we're going to do it. Um, and that'll kind of limit the length of uh, each episode of the podcast if I kind of break the content up uh, that way. I think things will just go a lot smoother that way. Um, so let's start with these armor sets. So uh, this being a, a dungeon pack, of course, each dungeon comes with um, three new five-piece sets and a monster set for the veteran version. Um, so we'll start with the Ice Reach sets. So the first one is a light armor set called Hedy's Hearth. That's H-I-T-I apostrophe S, Hedy's Hearth. Uh, so it gives us Magicka Recovery, Magicka Recovery. Uh, the four piece gives us Max Magicka. And then for the five piece, when you heal yourself or an ally with an ability, gain a Warming Aura, uh, which restores 10, 20 health every one second and reduces the cost of sprint, block, and roll dodge by 5% for everyone that is inside of the aura. Uh, and that can happen every 12 seconds, uh, and it's a 10 second duration. So uh, this is clearly, as far as I can see, it's like a PVP healing set or a support set, probably not a lot of useful applications in PVE. Uh, sounds like it's very easy to proc. It's gonna be easy to maintain that maximum uptime, which is pretty high. Last 10 seconds with a 12 second cooldown. So you're gonna have about two seconds of downtime typically, probably. Uh, a free 1K AOE hot. Uh, that'll layer pretty nicely with uh, abilities like healing springs or radiating regeneration, or maybe just be a substitute for one of those things and free up a bar slot. Um, that 5% cost reduction for the sprinting, blocking, dodging could potentially be pretty significant depending on the types of builds or play styles uh, uh, of the players in your group. Uh, it could really help them out quite a bit potentially, especially if they know you're wearing it and they, they are kind of adjusting their builds uh, accordingly so they can pack in maybe more damage or something like that. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, my only question is how big is that warming aura? How close do my allies have to be in order to get those benefits, it's kind of surprising that that isn't really mentioned in the description. Maybe it will be when it goes live. We'll see. Uh, but I like the idea of this set. I actually think it would go really well on my Magicka Warden. Uh, I have it set up to be a PvP support build right now, and it's all about like nourishing the team and buffing them and making them stronger. Uh, she's using Spell Power Cure and Transmutation right now. Uh, but I think maybe this set possibly could be a good replacement for transmutation. Uh, I think it'd at least be worth uh, trying out. It seems like it would still fit the theme of the build pretty nicely. And I don't know, I just wonder how it performs. Uh, I think I might at least try it out. This uh, this next set has been getting a lot of attention. A lot of people have been talking about this one on the forums and whatnot. Uh, Titanborn Strength, it's a medium armor set. Uh, it gives us physical penetration, weapon damage, and maximum stamina. Uh, and then the five piece, it gives you 110 weapon damage and 1240 physical penetration, which isn't all that much. 
Um, but that amount doubles whenever you fall below 75% health, and it quadruples whenever you fall below, fall below uh, 50% health. So that's uh, 440 weapon damage and 4960, almost 5k penetration when you're under 50% health. Um, now that is, that's a lot of damage, but you have to be, you know, under 50% health, uh, to, to get it. It's another, uh, it's another set that seems like it's clearly intended for PVP. And we'll see that with, I think almost all of these sets seem to be strictly PVP sets. Um, it's going to be pretty difficult to take advantage of this set, uh, in PVE where you're spending the vast majority of the time with a full health bar. Uh, so it's not going to be useful in PvE at all, I don't think. Um, it's an interesting idea. I like it. It's kind of like giving the player an, sort of an enrage mechanic or something like that. Like the more damage you take, the lower you fall on health, the more enraged and dangerous you become. So it's you know it's kind of like a dungeon or trial boss mechanic or something. Um, seems like it could work well on a maybe a tanky vampire kind of build. You could run really high HP and even fairly low damage. Uh, and then just intentionally allow yourself to fall low on health and get this huge damage buff. And since you're a vampire, thanks to the, I think it's the unnatural resistance passive, uh, you're going to get tankier and tankier as you fall lower and lower on health. Uh, and you could even use an armor set like Mark of the Pariah to, to really enhance that. Uh, Mark of the Pariah, uh, you gain up to, I think, 11k uh, physical spell resistance based on how much health you're missing. So if you are that, if you're wearing that and you're a vampire, you know, you can maybe afford to let yourself get low on health and kind of just hang out there uh, and just keep this um, keep this massive damage buff. Um, I think it might be difficult to pull off, but it I, I think it could also be really effective for someone who is able to pull it off. Um, so that, there's some cool synergy there with vampirism too. I think that's kind of neat. And this being a very vampire centric DLC, I wonder if that was maybe intentional. Um, probably not a set that I'm going to use. I don't, I don't know. I just don't like the idea of having to hang out with low health in order to, to get this buff, but I, I bet a lot of people are going to be trying this out. Um, but I wonder, I wonder like long-term once kind of the, the new wears off, I wonder how popular it really ends up being in the long run for a PVP set. I'm, I'm curious to see. The heavy armor set is called Bonnie's Torment. That's B-A-N-I, Bonnie's Torment. Gives us 4% healing taken, uh, maximum health, maximum stamina. And when you taunt a nearby enemy, you tether them for five seconds. And while tethered, you give them major maim, and you also have um, major vitality at the same time. So they, they have their damage done reduced by 30%, and you have your healing taken increased by 30%. Uh, very, very strong. And the tether is broken uh, if the enemy moves uh, more than eight meters away. And that can happen every 14 seconds. So that's an incredibly powerful buff and debuff. But I feel like that five second duration with a 14 second cooldown really diminishes my enthusiasm for this set. Um, I think more often than not, it's going to be kind of difficult to really capitalize on that proc within that five second window. And then you have to wait nine more seconds to try again. So I think I'd rather have a weaker proc with a higher uptime. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I just don't think a lot of people are going to be flocking to this set. Uh, it just seems like it isn't reliable enough. Uh, I don't know, who knows? Maybe I'll be proven wrong and this set is busted OP. Uh, but it just doesn't seem too exciting to me. Uh, and then the monster set in this uh, in this dungeon is called Mother... C I'm, I'm going to pronounce this Mother CNA. Um, mm -hmm. C-I-A-N-N-A-I-T. C-N-A? We'll see. Um, the one-piece bonus gives us uh, 1096 max magicka, uh, and then the two-piece. While in combat, casting an ability with a cast time or channeling... <laughs> Let me back up and read that again. Uh, while in combat, casting an ability with a cast time or channeling an ability grants you a damage shield that absorbs 3,000 damage for 10 seconds. Uh, and that effect can happen every 10 seconds. So now I don't know if this is a typo or what, but if not, this seems like an incredibly weak and boring monster set. Uh, a 3k damage shield that refreshes once every 10 seconds, that's hardly anything at all. And remember in PvP, that value is cut in half. So it's a 1500 damage shield there. 
but even the three even the three K shield is pretty underwhelming. You compare that to Iceheart. I think Iceheart gives you almost a 10K shield that refreshes every six seconds and deals AOE damage. Uh, and it comes from a base vanilla dungeon, which is much easier content than a brand new DLC dungeon. Remember, you have to do these on vet to get the monster set. So I'm having a pretty hard time seeing any reason why someone would choose this set over Iceheart. Seems like Iceheart is much better in every way, and it's a lot easier to get. It's a strange one. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, I've read the description over and over, and that's that's what it says. 3,000 damage shield every 10 seconds. Uh, I have to imagine some tweaks will be made. Otherwise, nobody's going to be grinding a, a difficult brand new DLC dungeon to get this pretty lame set. All right, so let's move on to the Unhallowed Grave sets. Uh, so the light armor set there is called Draugrkin's Grip. It gives us uh, maximum magicka, spell penetration, and magicka recovery. Uh, and then for the five piece, dealing direct damage to an enemy has a 10% chance to place a ghostly curse on the enemy for six seconds. Uh, and cursed enemies take 530 extra damage from all of your damage abilities. Uh, and that can occur every six seconds. Seems fairly straightforward. It's just a damage set. Um, I don't know exactly how much damage that amounts to, but it seems like it could potentially be a lot. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what the testers come up with. I hope it has some kind of cool visual effect. Otherwise, even if it is strong, it just seems boring. It's just like dealing damage makes you deal more damage is <laughs> kind of all it does. But I guess, I don't know. I guess that's what all damage sets do, really. Um this is one of the few sets this patch that actually seems like it'll probably be a good PvE set. The medium armor set is called Aegis Collar, A-E-G-I-S, Aegis Collar. Gives us weapon damage, stamina recovery, and weapon damage. Uh, and then for the five piece, when you deal critical damage with a melee ability, summon a lesser Aegis for 12 seconds. After two and a half seconds, the lesser Aegis spins its blades, dealing 4880 bleed damage every one second. Uh, and that effect can occur once every 10 seconds. So basically, you're going to have 100% uptime on that. Uh, that's quite a lot of damage. Uh, and Aegis, uh, I think an Aegis is those like um, floating dudes that have like four arms holding swords and they spin around. Um, so you see a lot of them in like Spellscar and Craglorn, or I think the, the Symphony of Blades boss in the Depths of Malatar. I think that's an Aegis. Um, it seems like a cool set. Uh, I wonder if the Aegis is stationary or if it can move around and actually aggro enemies. I haven't seen any PTS testing or anything like that. Um, the way it's worded, it makes it sound like it's stationary, um, but 4880 bleed damage every one second, that is a lot of damage. It seems like it's going to be pretty easy to proc and maintain probably about 100% uptime most of the time. Um, it also seems like a like a thematically just like a cool fit for a stamina sorcerer. St summoning this sword wielding Aegis just seems really fitting for a stam sork. Uh, and since we're probably never going to get that air Atronach ultimate that we've been asking for anytime soon, uh, this is a way to sort of have a build that fits that theme of stamina summoner, uh, and still seems like it'll actually be really good damage at the same time. So I like this set. Seems cool. Uh, I'm guessing that Aegis is going to be stationary, which probably means it won't find its way into a lot of PvP builds, but I could see in Battlegrounds it could, it could actually work still really well, even if it is stationary in some of those tightly cramped spaces. Uh, but I think in PvE, definitely it's going to be a very strong set. The heavy armor set is called Grave Guardian. Uh, it gives us maximum stamina, maximum health, and maximum health. Uh, and then for the five piece, summon a stone aura while blocking, hardening you and your nearby group members, uh, increasing their physical and spell resistance by 4430. Uh, seems like this would complement that other new Hades Hearth set pretty nicely, which gives us that warming aura. They both give these like auras that strengthen your allies in these various ways. Uh, 4430, that's a very good amount of resistance. That's about I think like a 6% damage reduction for everybody that's around you. And all you have to do is just hold block and it just gives that to them. Uh, so a very easy proc condition. Um, could be a really strong set for like a perma block PVP heal tank build or something like that. I can definitely see some niche builds making good use out of this because it gives a really strong group buff and it's really easy to proc. Uh, so uh, anytime that's the case, it's usually going to be a pretty popular PVP set. 
Uh, and then the monster set in this dungeon, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this one either, Jalnar's Nightmare, K-J-A-L-N-A-R apostrophe S, Jalnar's Nightmare. Uh, gives you spell damage, uh, and then for the two-piece, um, dealing damage with a light attack puts a bone stack on your enemy for five seconds. Uh, you can only apply one bone stack uh, every one second. At five stacks, an undodgeable skeletal hand attacks your enemy after one second, knocking them into the air and stunning them for three seconds, or dealing 14,500 magic damage if they cannot be stunned, so if they're on CC immunity. Um, I gotta say, I'm, I don't think I'm a huge fan of this monster set either, at least not for PvP. Um, it's going to be very difficult to predict when or if that stun is even going to happen. Uh, so I think it's going to be difficult to kind of plan your combo around that. Uh, and the same goes for the burst damage too. 14,500, that's a whole lot of damage, but your target is only going to take it if they're on CC immunity. Uh, and so again, it's going to be hard to plan around that uh, and capitalize on it. I think I'd prefer the proc to be weaker, but more reliable, um, uh, like maybe half the damage in a soft CC, and they both proc at the same time every time, or something like that. Uh, I'm sure we'll see some people try to use it because 14,500 damage is really enticing. Uh, but I'm guessing as time goes on, we'll see that this set becomes less and less popular in PV PvP. Uh, however, I think it's going to be incredibly great, uh, incredibly powerful set in PvE uh, because bosses are always CC immune, so you're guaranteed to get that 14,500 proc. Uh, every single time on the boss. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing there. We also have three new crafted sets and the crafting stations are located inside Cyrodiil. So these are Cyrodiil crafted sets that are, you know, definitely PVP focused sets. Uh, the first one here uh, is called Critical Repost. Um, so it gives us, uh, this, this one's pretty interesting. It gives us 424 crit resistance for the two piece bonus. Uh, we get max health for the three piece, and then for the four piece, another 424 crit resistance. I think that's pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever seen critical resistance on a two through four piece bonus. I can't think of anywhere where I've seen that before. It's the first time. Um, and then for the five piece, when you take critical damage, you apply minor uncertainty and minor enervation to the enemy for four seconds. Uh, and that reduces their physical and spell critical rating by 1,314, uh, and, and, and it reduces their critical damage by 10%. And it says an enemy can only be affected by your critical repost once every seven seconds. So it has a four second uptime, and you, then you'll have three seconds of downtime. Uh, what I think is interesting about this set is it's kind of a new way to mitigate critical damage outside of the impenetrable trait or the impregnable armor set. Um, and this does that in the form of a debuff on your enemy. So the critical damage uh, is reduced against all targets, not just yourself. Uh, so I think it's a pretty cool set. I like the idea. And depending on your build and your play style, it may be enough crit mitigation to allow you to use a different armor trait like Divines or Well-Fitted uh, and still be covered when you take a big crit spike. I think it's a pretty cool set. Um, the next one, the next uh, Cyrodiil crafted set here is called Unchained Aggressor. Uh, it gives us maximum stamina, stamina recovery, and weapon and spell damage for the four piece. Um, and then for the five piece, after breaking free, gain Major Berserk for nine seconds, increasing your damage done by 25%. Uh, and this effect can occur once every 21 seconds. So that's actually a pretty high uptime for Major Berserk. Major Berserk, that is, uh, I mean, that's the mother of all buffs right there. I mean, that's the one that every everyone's after, really. Uh, it's a pretty uncommon buff. It's pretty hard to get. Um, and nine whole seconds of it. Uh, and then what? So you're going to have 10, 11 seconds of downtime, but then nine seconds of uptime. So close to 50% uptime on that. It's a pretty massive damage bonus. Um, it's kind of a weird proc condition. Uh, you have to break free in order to do it. Um, so it might be kind of difficult to control it, but I bet players are going to learn how to use it and take advantage of it when the time is right. Nine seconds is plenty of time to capitalize on that proc. And I think it's going to be easy to just play defensively, save your ultimate until the set procs, then go for your big burst combo. Uh, 
I I bet that'll be nerfed. That seems that seems way too strong. A nine seconds of major berserk with only eleven seconds of downtime, uh, or twelve seconds of downtime. I guess it is uh, still. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. And the last Cyrodiil crafted set is called Dauntless Combatant. Uh, it gives you maximum stamina, maximum health, uh, maximum magicka. Uh, and then for the five piece, we get another line of max health. And then when you are affected by a disabling effect, you automatically break free for no cost. And that can happen once every 21 seconds. Uh, and that's all that set does. You just automatically break free once every 21 seconds. Um, Probably not going to be a widely used set. Uh, probably, you know, probably no one's going to want to dedicate an entire five-piece armor set to uh, to a free break free once every twenty-one seconds. Uh, I do think it's kind of interesting though when we um, compare this to the one we just talked about, uh, Unchained Aggressor. Um, that one also has a twenty-one second cooldown and it procs from breaking free. Uh, and so this one gives us a free break free once every 21 seconds. So I wonder if that's like an intentional thing, if if one procs the other, you know. I doubt in practice that it would work that that smoothly. You're probably going to need to break free more than once every 21 seconds, so it's not going to line up exactly. Uh, but it is interesting that this, this set gives you a free break free once every 21 seconds, and then uh, Unchained Aggressor gives you that major berserk from breaking free once every 21 seconds. So I, I bet I bet some people are at least going to try that combo out and see how it works. They're also reworking a number of existing sets in some mostly minor ways. Uh, I'm not going to touch on all of them because it's actually a pretty long list and we'll be here quite a while if we try to talk about every single one, but I'll touch on some of the the ones that stand out to me. So um, Clever Alchemist getting buffed a little bit. The proc's now going to last 20 seconds instead of 15 seconds, and it's going to give you 675 weapon and spell damage instead of 661. So just a bit of a buff all around. This is already a pretty popular set, and I think it's just going to be even more enticing now. Uh, Curse Eater. Curse Eater was definitely buffed. I'm really happy about this one. Uh, it has an 8-second cooldown per target now rather than on the entire set. Um, so I think... I think now that means this can actually proc on multiple targets at a time, which is really, really nice. Seems like a great change. I think a lot of people are going to start using this set as a result of this. Um, this can now, I think this will allow a healer to rely on this alone as their cleanse and not really necessarily have to use up a bar slot for purge or something like that. Uh, Elf Bane, uh, this one actually is getting a pretty hefty buff. Uh, increases the duration of fire abilities by five seconds instead of two seconds. That is a huge buff. Uh, I wonder how this set is now going to perform on a PvE Mag DK. It was already a pretty decent set for a Mag DK, uh, but with three more seconds, it seems like it could be very, very good now. Uh, it means DKs aren't going to have to recast their dots nearly as often, which should help, should help their sustain quite a bit. Uh, and as we all know, DKs need all the help they can get with sustain. Uh, so I'm curious to see how this shakes out, to see if this set becomes even more popular with PvE mag DKs, or even maybe the new mag DK meta. Scathing Mage was buffed a little bit. I think this is long overdue. Uh, it now has a 20% proc chance from any direct damage rather than just direct critical damage. Uh, the duration and cooldown are now 5 seconds instead of 6 seconds. Um, this set has always been just right on the edge of being a decent set, uh, but it's never just quite getting there. It's never quite good enough to just uh, use, like to not just use Julianos instead. Um, so I wonder if this is going to be that little, that little nudge that it needed to push it up into viability. Uh, I hope so, because it always seemed like a pretty cool set. Uh, destructive Mage, so now you can activate your own bomb. So when you use a heavy attack, you, you place a bomb on someone. Uh, and before, like it is right now in the live server, one of your allies has to hit that same target with a heavy attack to trigger the bomb. Uh, well, now you can trigger your own bomb with your own heavy attack. Um, they did reduce the AoE damage by about 1k. It's still pretty strong. Uh, I'm betting we're going to see this set used a lot more. Players are always asking for more tools to break up groups. Um, and this has always been one of the go-tos for that, but it's difficult to coordinate it with other players. Um, so this change should alleviate that, I think, quite a bit. Uh, I think that's probably a good thing. Uh, and Molag Kina is getting a pretty good buff here as well. 
Uh, now, when this set procs, it increases the cost of your abilities by 8% instead of 20%. That's a huge buff. Uh, I fully expect this set to see a lot more usage after this change. Uh, it was already extremely strong, but that 20% uh, cost increase was just too much for most builds to stomach, I think. Um, so I think this is going to start looking a lot more attractive for players. I bet we'll, see, uh, we'll start seeing people equipping this a lot more. So let's gloss over some of these uh, combat and balance changes a little bit. Uh, since this is the first week of PTS, like I was mentioning before, a lot can change between now and the live patch. So I'm not going to dive too deep into the details of these changes. I'm just going to mention some of the bigger, more impactful changes. Uh, and we're not even really going to talk about the implications of it all. I'm just going to kind of mention them and move on. Um, and we'll dive deeper into these changes once the patch goes live and, you know, things will be a bit more locked in at that point. Um, so let's start with just some of the um, general changes or improvements. So uh, one thing, this is probably my favorite thing in the whole patch, uh, attempting to drink a potion while unable to drink no longer plays the sound effect that you actually drank the potion. Um, that's incredible. That's great. I, I'm, I'm constantly, I, I use roll dodge cancel quite a bit. And a lot of times I'll roll dodge and then try to drink a potion like right after the roll dodge. But it's in this window of time where... Apparently the potion can't be activated, but it makes the sound effect as though I did. Um, and so sometimes, you know, I'm not looking down to see if that icon turns gray. Um, so I think I drank the potion, but it turns out I didn't. So I'm really glad for this change. I think that's going to alleviate that quite a bit. Um, now here's a big change, big, big change. Uh, battlegrounds. You can no longer queue for battlegrounds as a group, solo only. This is a this is a pretty wild change. Um, it's a it's an interesting one. It's one that I've seen a lot of players ask for. Um, now it's pretty contentious. Obviously, this is uh, an MMO. This is an online multiplayer game. The whole point is to group up with people and and play stuff with people online. Um, they do say that this is kind of an experiment. Uh, I really personally don't expect this to last more than one patch. Uh, I think they're just gathering some data um, and just trying to figure stuff out about the group finder, you know, trying to make it better. And this is just another step along the way. I'm very curious, though. I'm very interested to see how it plays out. I'm, I'm personally not mad about it at all. I do like grouping up with people. and I'm going to miss doing that. Um, but for one... Like I said, I fully expect grouping to return uh, in the in the very next update. Um, and in the meantime, I think it's going to be revealing to see how things play out when when everyone knows that there are no pre-mades. It, it's everyone playing is a solo player. The thing is, there are a lot of complaints about pre-made groups versus random groups and how you know that that happens sometimes and it's a very frustrating experience really for both sides of that. Um, personally, I, I know that that does happen. Pre-mades versus pugs does happen from time to time, but I don't think it happens as often as a lot of people think. Uh, I think a lot of these really strong, really dominant groups are just for random experienced players. Um, and you know, you'd be surprised at how coordinated a group can be without comms and in, in high MMR matches, a lot of these players know each other. They've, they've seen each other over and over and over again. They've played against each other over and over and over again. And so for the most part, they know what to do from one moment to the next. They don't necessarily need somebody on voice telling them what needs to happen. Um, and, you know, a lot of times all it takes is really just stay close to the group. And as long as everybody knows to stay close to the group and reposition when it looks like a, like a third party situation is about to happen, you know, oftentimes that alone is all it takes to absolutely dominate an entire match. And people think it's a pre-made, but it's really just four players who have some experience. But it's going to be a challenge. Like I'm in a couple of guilds that are specifically focused on battlegrounds and without being able to group up with people and go into battlegrounds, a lot of what those guilds do, they're not going to really be able to do at all anymore. Um, so I think, you know, these, these guilds, like the activities and the things that they do, the events that they host, I think are a lot, a lot of them are just going to kind of have to be on hold until they put grouping back in. 
Um, so, you know, I really do hope that I'm not wrong about the fact that grouping is going to come back because otherwise these really active, really fun guilds uh, are probably just going to dry up and go away. I'm going to try to move through the rest of these kind of quickly. So off balance is changing. So it lasts seven seconds from player sourced abilities and sets. Uh, but players will now have 15 seconds of off balance immunity after the effect ends. Uh, so I think kind of basically the same way uh, off balance works on boss fights. Um, heavy attacks and abilities will no longer consume off balance. So it's going to last the full seven seconds every time. Uh, it's a very interesting change, and it's a, it's one that's really worth digging into. It has a lot of different implications, uh, but we're going to wait until the patch goes live because I don't want to waste a lot of breath uh, only to not even have this change go live at all or for it to be totally different. So we're just going to move right along. Um, Necromancer. For the Necromancer, they're making some more tweaks to Blast Bones and the Tether abilities. So Blast Bones will now leap from up to 28 meters away instead of just 15 meters. And they sped up the, the leap animation as well, so it should hit the target faster. And some people on forums are saying that, that this actually feels pretty good. Uh, they've extended the length of time uh, that a corpse from Blast Bones and the Skeletal Archer and the Spirit Mender will stay on the ground so you have more time to utilize them. Uh, and they've widened the area in which tethers can be activated, so it should be a lot easier to use those tether abilities now. Uh, for the Dragon Knight, they're still tweaking Stone Fist. They've updated this ability to improve its visual storytelling, they say. Um, so now it's a two-part ability. Now you stomp the ground. Uh, for When you cast it at first, you stomp the ground, and it summons these three earthen spheres that hover around you. And then your next three casts, you're lobbing those earthen spheres at your target. And I think it's a 28-meter range now as well. Um, the base ability no longer has a stun mechanic, but the final cast will, uh, you know, I'm sorry, the, the base ability no longer has the stagger mechanic, uh, but the final cast will still stun your target. Uh, but then the stone giant morph gets that stagger mechanic put back into it. Um, nothing spectacular happening on Nightblade, nothing really important happening on Sorcerer. Um, Templar, this is kind of a big change that P the PvP people are happy about, I think. The Sacred Ground passive will no longer snare enemies in the area. Uh, instead, it's going to increase the Templar's block mitigation by an additional 10% while they're standing inside of one of the, the mentioned areas in that passive. Um, so people have been complaining about that forever. We're going to talk about that more later. I, I strongly doubt that they revert this change. I think this is nothing but unanimously well-received. Uh, the thing about uh, Extended Ritual, it covers such a huge area and just having that permanent snare just in, in the entire sp uh, space where the, the fight is happening is super frustrating because you just can't get away from it. So this is a great change. Um, nothing big happening with Warden either. Uh, for the two-hander, uh, the Berserker Strike Ultimate, they're reducing the damage by 16%. Uh, dizzying Swing is getting it stunned back, sort of. <laughs> so now it stuns targets who are off balance. And remember that Dizzy also applies off balance. So basically you'll have to hit your target a second time and then they'll get they'll get the stun that time. Uh, but remember, uh, as we were just talking about, uh, players are going to have off balance immunity now, whereas they didn't before. Um, and so uh, off balance is also more common than ever. So... <laughs> Uh, players are going to be on off-balance immunity a lot of the time. So it's actually, I think, going to be even an even less reliable stun than it is right now. Um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll dig into that more later. <laughs> um, vampire. Now, of course, a lot of big changes are coming to Vampire later, but I think just this patch um, uh, is not... This patch isn't the big Vampire revamp. This is This is just like minor changes. Um, although this isn't very minor, Drain Essence. Uh, so the stun from this ability and its morphs now occur when the cast ends rather than when it begins. Uh, so this really isn't surprising at all. They've been nerfing or just straight up removing ranged CC abilities over the last few patches. And this is one of the few uh, ranged stuns left for Magicka players. And so everyone has been using it. Uh, and as we all know, the more popular a skill becomes, the more likely it is to get nerfed. Uh, and so, you know, that's what's happening. Uh, I'm personally glad. I don't like the skill. I'm tired of getting hit with it. Uh, but I know a lot of people will be bummed, so that, that does suck for them. Uh, but like I said, you, you had to see it coming. 
I think that's mostly what I'm wanting to cover uh, for this episode. I think it's cool that they really are focusing on um, performance uh, overall. Uh, and I think that's what like um, these off balance changes. I think a lot of what's behind the decision making there is really to improve performance. Uh, it's not strictly a, a balance thing. Um, and, you know, it seems like they really are listening to player feedback and they're, they're understanding that if the game is going to grow any more, then um, some attention is going to have to get paid to some of these performance issues, the, the group finder issues, things like that. Uh, with, a, with a Skyrim focused uh, expansion on the horizon, you know, we have to expect a massive influx of players, uh, you know, getting in on that uh, Skyrim nostalgia. Uh, and if the game is in good operating order, you know, if everything's working good and people are having a good time while they're here, this could be a new renaissance for ESO. You know, it seems like they're aware of that and are making an effort to be prepared. Uh, so I hope they're successful. Obviously, I love this game. I want it to be successful. I want to see it continue to grow. Of course, the, the more the merrier, the more players we can uh, get to come and play with us here. You know, obviously, that's going to be that's going to be a good thing. So I think that's all I have to talk about. Uh, appreciate you hanging out and listening to me ramble on about the Elder Scrolls Online. If you'd like to get a hold of me, you can email me at ketsparrowhawk at gmail.com. Until next time, remember to always question the meta. Mm-hmm.